a pixel drawing engine. That's what a GPU is. GPUs were never designed with AI in mind. They were designed for gaming. Well, that hasn't stopped Nvidia from becoming a $2 trillion company on the back of a workload that's been retrofitted into their hardware. It's no wonder Jensen Huang calls Nvidia a software company. The CUDA AI mode has taken the company to heights it would never have achieved with gaming alone. But with gaming approaching photorealism and the performance demands associated Associated with that, GPUs are coming to a crossroads. Currently, gaming and AI are two completely different workloads. Will Nvidia double down on GPUs focused on AI, or will they develop a new kind of specialized device for AI? Are gaming GPUs going to become CUDA platforms first and gaming devices second? Maybe a hybrid of some sort will emerge that merges AI and pixel drawing. As it turns out, phase change memory has seen some recent developments that make it the leading candidate for on-chip logic and memory heterogeneous integration that could allow GPUs to reach unprecedented heights, quite literally. Today's video is sponsored by urcdkeys.com. If you want to activate your Windows, you can pay Microsoft $100 or more for a Windows 10 Pro key. Or you can get one from an OEM seller like URCD Keys, who have partnered with Cortex for a discount on what is already a really low price, for a total of just $15 when you use my code. The keys work globally, and you can even use them to upgrade to Windows 11. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased order orders on the URCD Keys website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate, and then click Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, paste your key you just purchased, and click Next. That's it, Windows is activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 code and get it for just under $84. URCD Keys has a New Year Super Sale going on right now, so you can get even more savings until the 31st of January. A huge thanks to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the description to get your cheap OEM Windows key today. If we look at the block diagram of a GPU like the H100, we see a device with a lot of compute density that reflects its intended use. Read data from memory, process that data locally per pixel, and then write the data back. This is a chip designed to do lots of parallel operations for pixels. What Nvidia discovered with the introduction of CUDA is that this parallelism can be abstracted into a massively parallel set of other inputs, operations, and outputs. So it's been adapted to workloads like AI. But that's not what GPUs were originally designed to do, as some seem to be forgetting. For over a decade now, Nvidia has been working hard with an army of software developers to retrofit their inadequate AI chips with a ton of memory bandwidth in order to allow for workloads like AI to be performant. Another dissonance between GPUs and AI workloads is that AI models don't have that many objects. Yet, a GPU like the H100 has a ton of threads, so a lot of workarounds have to happen to keep the GPU efficiently occupied. This is far from an optimized way of handling AI workloads. As such, the biggest threats to Nvidia's dominance in AI are companies designing chips specifically tailored for AI workloads. The problem there, as we've seen with Google's TPU, is that AI models are changing so rapidly that by the time a chip is ready to be deployed, it's already outdated, and Nvidia's more flexible hardware Hardware ends up being the default choice in an uncertain landscape. CUDA is also so ingrained that developers are wary of having to devote a lot of man hours to have to learn a whole new paradigm in unproven new frameworks. One company that believes they found the right balance is Tenstorrent. Unlike the H100, Tenstorrent's AI processor Grayskull doesn't fetch data from a large pool of cash. Instead, each of the 120 cores has its own SRAM. And that's right, each of the cores has its own cache, so to speak. By dividing the types of work through different arrays, the chip minimizes data transfers, keeping energy down and access to memory low. This methodology meets AI workloads head-on, in a flexible enough way that chips don't run the risk of being outdated as new models emerge. In addition to this, while NVIDIA has to rely on ever-larger quantities of expensive HBM, there's no HBM required 
intense storage solution. Instead, we see low power DDR4. That's a huge benefit of Jim Keller's solution, as it costs six to eight times more to build a chip with HBM memory than with regular DRAM, and costs are going up with each new generation of HBM. Ten storage are already seeing the fruits of their labor, with Japan's leading edge semiconductor technology center recently announcing a key partnership with Tenstorin to co-design a cutting-edge 2 nanometer AI accelerator that uses some of these concepts on a RISC-V platform. So the advantages are clear for chips built specifically for AI. All of the access logic and layers of abstraction in GPUs required to make AI workloads work are unnecessary in a chip like Tenstorin's. So what can NVIDIA do about this? Keep brute forcing performance by making ever larger chips with more and more HBM? Is that sustainable? It turns out Jensen might find solace in PCM or phase change memory. And the side effects that that might have in consumer GPUs could actually mean very good news for gamers. Even if Nvidia ends up losing ground to custom accelerators in AI, phase change memory is a non-volatile memory technology, meaning it retains the data stored, similar to flash memory or a hard disk drive. But the key difference is that it can be written in only a few nanoseconds. This means it can be used not just as storage, but in place or as complementary to volatile memory like DRAM. So memories near compute, like the RAM in your system, don't hold data after you turn off your computer. But something like an M.2 drive does hold data, even if you switch your system off. But an M.2 drive is not fast enough to be used as RAM. PCM gives you the best of both worlds, as it retains data even if you switch off your computer, but operates at near the same speed as DRAM. In a typical von Neumann system, the data has to move between compute and memory, retrieved, processed, and then written back. But with PCM, the memory is not used only to store data, but also to perform some computational tasks, meaning data movement can be greatly minimized. If you've been following my channel, you remember that data movement is arguably the main bottleneck in computing systems today, as memory access typically consumes a hundred to a thousand times more energy than an operation. Now, PCM is nothing new. In fact, Intel dabbled with PCM in its Optane line of products, launched in 2018, but have since given up on that venture, as Intel tends to do. The properties of phase change memory were first discovered in the mid-1950s, and over the decades, several attempts were made to try and harness the technology for electric data storage. But the device degradation and instability of operation have been difficult obstacles to overcome. Optical memory is where you'll find phase change materials more commonly these days, like with DVDs and Blu-ray discs. PCM works by causing a phase change material inside the memory device to switch from a crystalline phase to an amorphous phase and vice versa. In simple terms, in a write, an electrical pulse is applied and the material changes from amorphous to crystalline. A read, therefore, involves reading the electrical resistance to determine the state. So how could this transform GPUs as we know them? Well, the memories that the GPU currently uses near a compute are volatile. So each time those memories are accessed, they need to be rewritten. This is unavoidable with DRAM. PCM, on the other hand, does not need to be rewritten when read. You just read the resistance of the cell to find out if it's a 1 or a 0. But the value remains the same, stored until you write over it. Why does that matter? Because switching a ton of memory cells produces a ton of heat. This is the main reason why 3D stacking memory on top of the logic hasn't happened in GPUs. If you were able to somehow stack several layers of memory on top of the GPU die, the performance gains would be enormous, because you would reduce the amount of time and energy required to move data back and to memory, and massively increase bandwidth. PCM is also much denser than DRAM, so it will scale beyond DRAM to newer nodes, meaning you can have large pools of memory stacked on top of a GPU if you can make it work. SK Hynix proposed the use of HBM4 on top of a GPU to solve the bandwidth and data movement overheads. But NVIDIA's chief scientist, Bill Daly, said recently in a talk that it will take several generations of GPUs to solve the heat issues that stacking HBM on top of the chip would cause, with SK Hynix confirming that they are working with NVIDIA to try and make this a reality in a few years. The problem there is that even if NVIDIA and SK Hynix solve the
a heat problem. There's no way to commoditize a GPU that uses HBM4. It would simply be too expensive for anything other than NVIDIA's top-of-the-line AI-specific chips. Like we saw earlier, this was one of the key reasons for Tenstorrent to choose low-power DRAM for their chips. Well, two recent developments for PCM could be about to revolutionize the memory paradigm in GPUs and possibly other types of devices. The first development comes from Iran, of all places, where a team of researchers at the Sharif University of Technology disclosed the method to stack memory on top of a GPU by using a novel 3D hybrid design. There have been papers in the past, of course, talking about the benefits of 3D stacking memory, but the focus there was usually narrowed down to the bandwidth bottleneck, while this solution is a holistic forward-thinking method. Remember, the goal here is to stack dense, low-power and refresh-free non-volatile phase change memory on top of a state-of-the-art GPU so that we get both higher bandwidth and higher capacity within the existing power budget. This team's work concludes that it is possible to stack eight layers of 32 gigs of PCM along with two 8 gigabyte layers of DRAM on top of an existing high-end GPU, in this case NVIDIA's V100, for a total of 272 gigabytes of on-chip memory capacity. All of this without going over the power limits of the package. Note, this is not the same as a 2.5D package, where the memory is around the logic. So the proposed solution is sort of akin to HBM, which is also a stack of DRAM layers. But in this case, it would be a hybrid stack, composed of DRAM and PCM. And instead of being placed in a 2.5D package, the memory would be stacked directly on top of the GPU, with all all the benefits that that has. The projected performance uplifts are simply astounding, being almost 300% faster than the baseline GPU, while only seeing a drop in access latency of 3% on average. And if you look specifically at workloads where the dataset needs to fit into the GPU memory space, like AI, since this avoids most of the data movement that is required in current GPUs, you're looking at a 648% performance uplift and 87% better power compared to the baseline GPU. It's just staggering. How would this translate to gaming, for instance? Well, if you remember the L2 caches and last level caches have been increasing dramatically in the latest generations of gaming GPUs, with the resulting uplift being fairly modest still, you might see how desperate Nvidia, AMD and Intel are to get a larger pool of near compute memory. The problem with caches is that, well, First of all, it's not going to be feasible to keep increasing caches. We've reached a point of diminishing returns in the current paradigm. And secondly, if the workloads have relatively low data reuse, then they can't use the full capacity of the L2 cache anyway. Not to mention, of course, AMD's nemesis in particular, limited bandwidth. So you can think of this trend that we've seen of increasing caches as a sidestep, low-hanging fruit technique that has indirect benefits to bandwidth, but which has been mostly exhausted. Now we need solutions that directly address the problem of capacity and bandwidth in GPUs. With this hybrid DRAM plus PCM memory stack, gaming workloads which require a lot of data movement would benefit tremendously, with up to three times uplifts in performance compared to today's top GPUs. While a GPU like AMD 7900 XTX has in effect brought memory closer to compute, you can see the limitations of having to fetch data from memory memory chiplets, with the GPU having to manage the energy required for such operations, resulting in lower clocks and poor overall performance. If instead of the chiplet layout the AMD has for the 7900 XTX, it had memory stacked as per this solution, it would have been up to three times faster and therefore more than twice as fast as a 4090 in memory sensitive applications. Without changing anything else, all those fine grained threads in GPUs are simultaneously sending multiple memory requests, which is why the memory subsystem of the GPU is the current biggest bottleneck to performance. Solving this problem will bring gigantic performance uplifts for gamers. We can see in the thermal map of the memory stack that in the 10 layers, DRAMs are at the top, closer to the top heatsink, as this is where refreshes will happen. Remember, DRAM needs to be refreshed. 
PCM doesn't. Using a mapping scheme, the heat can be managed by orchestrating which memory layers are rewritten. The team behind this work was able to stay within the power constraints by bringing down the SM count to 72 from 80. There are also radical limits to take into account, although that is likely to change with the to be announced B100. So the thing that's very encouraging about this novel method is that there was a very small reduction in SMs with every other metric staying the same, meaning this is basically a drop-in solution into current GPUs. The second development in PCM is complementary to this first study. It was recently published in the Nature Communications Journal, where a team that has been doing work with PCM for several years now presented a novel combination of phase change material, which achieves record low power density and switching voltage. The novel nanocomposite in this phase change material is composed of GE4, SP6, TE7. In other words, an optimized combination of germanium, antimony and tellurium. What's so interesting about that chemical symbol word soup, you might ask? Well, this novel material was discovered thanks to AI, and it's a great example of how AI can help the semiconductor industry surpass the current physical limits in chip making. This novel PCM achieves sub 1.5 picojoule switching energy and fast switching speed at roughly 40 nanoseconds. The team notes that even faster speeds could be achieved. So we're looking at close to cache level switching speed, but with hundreds of times more capacity. The super lattice of these materials materials also offers higher temperature stability than traditional PCM material combinations. We can see that it requires less than 1 volt for switching, so in combination with the previous work we looked at, it seems clear that we are on the cusp of 3D stacking PCM on top of CPUs and GPUs, which will result in unprecedented uplifts in performance. Now, these things take years to come to market, right? Well, guess who's been awarded a bunch of patents on stacked memory in the last few days? As you can see in this recent pattern from AMD, a combination of DRAM and Ferro Electric RAM is stacked on top of a processor like a GPU. FE RAM is another type of non-volatile RAM. So AMD's patent here of using a controller to orchestrate memory accesses in 3D stacked memory applies to PCM, as the method patented here is the access to the memory, not the type of memory. I'm not going to go into detail on the several patents that AMD got published on this topic, but I'll put all the relevant links in the video description below. It seems clear to me that we are only a couple generations away from 3D stacked GPUs if these novel methods of using PCM are harnessed by companies like TSMC, Samsung, Intel and SK Hynix. While there's no way to achieve 3D stacking with the current materials and memories without some miracle level discovery in cooling technology, by switching to PCM, this seems not only feasible, but to benefits like the unprecedented performance uplift seem enticing enough for us to see a race to see who gets there first. With its experience with stacking dies in the 3D Vcash Zen products and its links to Samsung and TSMC, it seems AMD is well positioned to be at the forefront of this incoming revolution in near compute memory. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron. Analyzing patents and scouring through material science journals is a ton of work, and there aren't any other tech channels out there with this level of research being done. Reward the quality content you enjoy by becoming a patron. Just follow the link in the end cards or in the video description. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.